Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. The program is Focal Point. The network is the American Family Radio Talk Network. Don't forget, we do want your listener stories for our share If AFR Talk, Focal Point, or any of the other programs on our talk radio lineup have impacted you, you appreciate the information that we bring you, uh, you value what we offer to you, and you've been impacted by that in some way, We'd love to have you call us and tell us your story. You can leave a brief recorded message, and we may be able to use that during our share which is coming up in early October. And our slogan this year for the share is standing together, standing firm in the faith, being strong and courageous. Words right out of 1 Corinthians 16, 13. So we are standing together, we with you, in order to defend and promote our values. And if you appreciate what AFR Talk has meant to you, uh, call this number. Let me uh, give it to you. I'll give it to you twice so you can write it down, plug it into your uh, cell phone there. 877-876-8893. So once again, you want to write it down, plug it into your cell phone. Here it is, 877-876-8893. Let us know how Focal, or how Focal Point and AFR Talk in general has impacted you. Now, uh, let's go to clip three, uh, Rob, if we can. Now, remember Mitt Romney said that he he was talking about the 47% of Americans who pay no income taxes, which is exactly right. Now, I, I thought Mitt Romney was not right when he said that these people never vote for me because I don't think that's right. And it created the impression that Mitt Romney had sort of given up on that 47%, was figuring he had no hope of selling his vision to them. Uh, and I don't believe that's correct. I don't believe that for one minute. I believe that everybody wants to realize the American dream. Uh, They want to be able to work with their own hands, provide for themselves, provide for their families. They want to pursue opportunity. They want uh, the opportunity to pursue a better standard of living for themselves and for their families. Every, Every heart in America resonates with that message, and that is the conservative message. Our message is we want to get government out of the way so you that are in the 47%, we don't care what bracket you're in. It doesn't matter to us because we know that you have aspirations. You have dreams for yourself for your career, the impact you'd like to make, the hopes that you have for your family and the kind of life that you would like to provide for them. We understand that. We resonate with that because that's our heartbeat too. We love our families and we want to provide for them and we want to improve their lot in life and we want the best for our kids. We want them to be able to go further and farther than we did in our lives and we've given ourselves as parents to help them get educated and get them launched into adult life. So we know what your your heartbeat is. And our message to you is we're going to get government out of your way. We're going to get government out of the way of the economy. We're going to get government out of the way of business. I told you yesterday the national, the federal code of regulations now, what was it, 119,000 pages. And Barack Obama's adding another regulation every three hours and 17 minutes. It's costing $1.8 trillion now to comply with all of the federal regulations. You know what that means? That's $1.8 trillion that's not available to go into the pocket of one of those people that's in the 47%. That's $1.8 trillion that can't go into creating jobs for people that are in the 47%. And we as conservatives saying, look, this is insane. Let's stop this nonsense. Let's reduce this regulation. Let's cut it out. Let's trim this federal regulation code down to nothing and set businesses free to do what they do, which is to create jobs for you, those of you that are in the 47%, those of you that are in the other 53%. Uh, so that's the conservative message. And, you know, it, 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 it's probably just the reality that Mitt Romney, uh, frankly, just does not seem to be a conservative in his core. You know, when he talks conservatism, it just kind of comes across as kind of a second language. And uh, that's just kind of the way of it. Now, I think he's been unfairly beat up over this 47% uh, thing because he was talking specifically about the fact, look, my, my agenda, my platform is cutting taxes. That's not going to mean a lot to people that aren't paying any taxes right now. So I don't think my message is going to resonate with them. That makes a certain amount of common sense. But Mitt Romney was not saying, look, I don't want to be the president of everybody. I don't want to do things that are good for everybody. He wasn't saying that. But that's how naturally the Democrats are painting this. And this is Barack Obama, clip three, from his appearance on David Letterman last night. And here's what he had to say about Mitt Romney's 47% comment. I don't know what he was referring to, but I I can tell you this. Um, 
when I, when I won in 2008, 47% of the American people uh, voted for John McCain. They didn't vote for me. And what I said on election night was, uh, even though you didn't vote for me, I hear your voices, and I'm going to work as hard as I can uh, to, to be your president. And one of the things I've learned as, as president is you represent the entire country. And when I meet Republicans uh, uh, as I'm traveling around the country, you know, they are hardworking family people uh, who care deeply about this country. And uh, my expectation is, is that if you want to be president, you've got to work for everybody, mm -hmm. not just for some. So Barack Obama said, I'm out here working for everybody. Mitt Romney, he's just working for the 53%. He's just working for the rich. He's just working for the elite. Uh, I'm the one that's working for everybody. Uh, I'm the president of everybody. I just, you know, Barack Obama says, I'm working for everybody. I'm the president for everybody. I'm in it for everybody. That Mitt Romney, he just cares about the people at the top of the heap. Well, ask the, the people at Delphi. This was a company that supplied auto parts to GM. They were non-union guys. And when Barack Obama took over GM, he aced them out. He cut them out of their pensions and out of their health plans completely. I got a story here, Washington Free Beacon, about two brothers, Fred, Arndt, and Dave. They came to GM at exactly the same time. One of them worked for GM. The other worked for Delphi. Both of them GM companies. Delphi was a GM subsidiary, which went bankrupt in 2005 and didn't emerge until 2009. And then Barack Obama came in and took over. And Fred, because of Barack Obama, he was 64. He lost his health. He lost his dental insurance. He lost his health insurance. He lost his dental insurance. He lost his life insurance. And he lost 70% of his pension. Barack Obama did that to him. Dave, who was a union guy, he lost 5% of his health insurance. His brother lost it all because he worked for a non-union outfit. And his, and some dental coverage, but his pension was made whole. He got 100% of his pension. His brother got bupkis, zip. So ask the people at Delphi whether Barack Obama is a president for all of the people. You know, ask the people in the coal industry. Barack Obama's working for everybody. I got a story here in the stack somewhere. A, a coal... Uh, fired a, a coal mining company is lay, closing down eight plants, laying off 1,200 workers. Why? Because of the regulations against the coal industry. It's the one promise that Barack Obama has kept. Remember, Barack Obama says, yeah, you can have a coal plant if you want, but it'll bankrupt you. I'm going to drive you right out of business. He has kept that promise. 1,200 people out of work, eight mines closed. Ask them if they think that Barack Obama is the president for everybody. Ask the people that would build the Keystone Pipeline, shovel ready. Construction firms, workers, ready to go, shut down by Barack Obama. Ask them if they feel like he's the president for everybody. American Airlines, they just sent layoff warnings to 11,000 people. Now, they may not lay all of them off, but they've sent warnings out because they're obligated by law to do that. So they're in trouble. Ask the people that work for American Airlines, do you think Barack Obama is the president for everybody? Tell it to the military. These sequestration cuts are, are going to decimate military contractors. They're going to send out a whole batch of layoff notices right before the election. So ask the people that work in the defense industry whether Barack Obama is the president. Ask the 23 million people that don't have a job. Do you feel like President Obama is working for everybody? Tell that to the bitter clingers. Uh, Barack Obama's got no use for you. You cling to your guns. You cling to your religion. You're a bitter clinger. I got no use for you. Tell that to the white working class voters. He's completely written them off. We don't even care about their vote. We don't want their vote. We're not even going to appeal to the vote. So ask the white working class if they feel Barack Obama is working for them, and then ask Catholic hospitals and charities who've had their religious rights and conscience rights trampled into the dust by this president. Ask him if they feel he's the president for everybody. Back in two, Focal Point, AFR Talk.